So hey guys, this is a new section we're going to look at here. Um, this is the uh, semester two. Okay, we're taking a peek at some physics here. And the first term we're going to look at is a term called kinematics, which can be uh, found in your notes, which you have access to through the master schedule for this uh, section. Um, so what we're going to take a peek at is what kinematics is, and basically we're going to start looking at motion. So the first topic in kinematics we're looking at is uh, motion in one in one dimension. All right, so uh, when we look at dimensions, uh, we can think of um, dimensions like this. We have a, uh, an x-axis going left to right. Um, I'm going to call this positive. I'm going to call this negative. Okay, that's just what I've decided to call it. Um, we could flip it around and call this negative and this positive, but we've got to agree on some sort of uh, method. Uh, so the method will be right is positive, left is negative. So that's one dimension. It's called the spatial dimension. Um, this here is the, so let me just erase that. This is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. We're going to call um, down negative and up positive. So when we think of the, the word distance, um, we know, like, that there's object A and object B, and we know that distance is the, <laughs> the distance between the two objects. But to try to define the, the word distance, let's take a few seconds as a class and try to come up with a definition of distance without using the words distance or length in your definition. Let's give it a shot. How'd you do? Well, Distance is really impossible to define, but it, yet it's a fundamental part of nature. It's so fundamental that it's impossible to define it in words. Uh, everyone knows what it is, but no one can really say what it is. But distances can be compared if you have two objects or more. Now, if I had just one object... I couldn't tell you anything about the distance of that object because I'd have to compare it to something else. So in physics, we take a peek at um, many different objects, but we'll start with two. So um, as we already know, we're going to be using a bit of the metric system to come up with distances and um, the common units that we're going to use uh, will be the meter. Okay, and what we can think of a meter as, um, we can think of it as about three feet, a little bit more than three feet. Um, so when we're looking at like meters per second later on, um, we can kind of get an idea of how fast that is. And we're going to be doing a lab that's going to describe uh, how fast like a meter per second would be. Okay, so it's important that we write down what uh, the meter uh, is. Um, so the meter is a measure of distance, which again, we can't really define that. Um, the symbol for distance, so we're going to come up with symbols and we're going to come up with uh, units. Okay, the symbol for distance is D and the unit is meters. So um, just an example, okay, if I travel seven meters, we'll be writing it down like this. Distance equals seven meters. Okay, so there's the unit. There's the symbol for distance. Okay, there's an example there. So once you write down a couple more, uh, maybe two or three more in your notebooks um, for distance, it could be as simple as saying uh, distance is 21 miles. Um, distance is 15 meters. Okay. Distance is 22 centimeters. Okay. Just come up with three of your own if you could at this point. Okay. So the other fundamental 
part of nature is something that we call time. Okay, now this is an interesting, to uh, interesting word. Um, we all know what it is, but we can't define it. So let's take a few seconds to define uh, what time is. And remember, try not to use the word time in your definition or any equivalent to the word time in your definition. So take a few minutes with me in class and let's, and let's try to define what time is. How'd you do? Okay, we probably came up with some sort of roundabout way to describe time, but it's very difficult to define it because it's so fundamental, we can't even use a word to describe it. Um, but we know what it is, though. Okay, we can relate to it. Uh, super cool little tidbit about time is that if we relate time to um, us, we see time going by from our frame of reference. And later we're going to learn what frame of reference is. Um, but from, let's say, time, we're looking at us, then we would be going by, okay? We would be changing. Uh, so if time stood still, we would be changing. Uh, it's kind of a cool uh, way to look at it. And we'll get into some discussions in class, I'm sure, um, on this topic. And I'm going to give you guys uh, some interesting tidbits about uh, time. But here's the deal. Uh, we can measure time, okay? We can say that the symbol for time uh, is T, and the unit is S for seconds. Okay, so we can um, call time, um, so something like this, an example would be T equals five seconds or t equals 25 seconds. Uh, you get, the, you get the, the hint there, right? Okay. So we can take our two most fundamental measurements of distance and time, and we can come up with um, something called speed. All right. And um, we'll talk a little bit about this in class, but basically we're looking at speed. Um, and we know that it's uh, equal to the distance divided by the time. So we'll kind of change that a little bit. We'll say speed is D over T. Okay, so speed is not a fundamental aspect of nature. It's just a ratio of two different things. Okay, going a little further with it, we can say speed, uh, the, un the units for speed uh, would be meters per second, okay, or m slash s, okay, so m meters per second. Um, and so we're reading this unit as meters per second. So let's take a look at a problem. Okay, we've got a car. Okay, and in physics, um, we, have, we have some steps to f solving a, a physics problem. Because after a while, these problems become more difficult to look at all the variables. Um, you know, the average person can only really comprehend two, maybe three different things at the same time. Um, I'll give you an example. If you're playing the piano and your right hand is doing something, okay, and then your left hand is doing something completely different, okay, and then in some cases that's two different functions you're doing with, with uh, your hands. Now, in some cases, now you have a foot that's doing something, and then, and then even if, if you're really advanced, you have another foot doing something else. So, like, the, physics is kind of like playing a piano in that um, there are many, there's going to be many different things that you're going to do 
that, um, that you're going to need to um, get down on paper uh, and understand that the process of physics is um, sometimes you, you may think it's too much work at first to write down everything and to um, take the time to, to follow a process. And I thought that too until I got into some more advanced physics. And then I understood that, yeah, the idea is that I can get things down on paper and then my mind can process one thing at a time. So let's look at this. Question number one. Okay, we're going to do just an example. Um, a car travels. Okay, we'll see. Here's a car. Okay. We'll put a little arrow here showing the direction. It's 10 meters a second. Um, and so the question is, like, how um, this means that the car is going 10 meters every single second. So here, here's the car going along. Okay, here's the car again. Yeah, it's not really the looks and looking the same. But let's say we have the car here. This is second one. This is second two. Okay, at this point, the car has traveled 10 meters in one second. So if this is the time frame, okay, it's going 10 meters in this one second. Now, if it continues that same speed, okay, then you might guess, be able to just take a guess and say, hey, yeah, the car at the one at the one two okay we'll actually put this at zero at the one two seconds okay it's going 10 meters a second here 10 meters a second here and every second it goes 10 meters so we can continue that process as long as the car is going a constant speed uh, and we know that it's going 10 meters per second so if I I just ask you from the picture how many meters did it cover in one second? You'll say 10. If, it, if I say how many meters does it cover in two seconds, you'll say 20. Okay, so you got 20 here. After three seconds, it covers 30 meters. Okay, so there's an idea of how to figure out and kind of get a visual representation of speed. Um, although you've, got, you've, you've really understood it throughout your lives. Um, you know, in the car and running and all that stuff. Okay, so we're going to look at a real question here. So this is your first question. If I give you a, a speed okay, as the unknown, okay, I give you the uh, distance as 60 meters, and I give you a time of 20 seconds. Okay, we'll say that what's happening is you have a rabbit. That's running, okay? And we say that it covers a distance of 60 meters in a time of 20 seconds. So what I'm asking you is how fast the rabbit going? what's the speed so you'll come through and you'll say speed is we know it's distance divided by time speed is uh, 60 meters divided by 20 seconds okay six over two okay there's the speed of the rabbit Okay, given the fact that the rabbit ran 60 meters in 20 seconds, there's the speed of the rabbit, 3 meters every second. Okay, so we figured that out. Now, um, in this class, you're going to have to be able to um, solve for D and T. Okay, in this next question, we got a car. Okay, here it is. Okay. Forgive my drawing, I'm not an artist. Um, okay, so you have a car, and we say that the speed is 40 meters per second. And the time that it's traveling 
is four seconds. Okay. Um, we want to know how far the distance the car has traveled. Okay. So let's um, let's take a look at it. We know speed is distance over time. Okay. And we're solving for distance. So we're going to get this all by itself. And this is where we, we have to know how to get the D by itself at this point. Um, if you need help with this, you can, we can absolutely go over some of that stuff. Um, so to get D by itself, it's divided by T. We multiply it by T on both sides. So we get rid of it from the bottom of that one. So on this side, we've got S times T equals D. So let's flip this around. And we're going to say that distance is speed times time. Okay. So you may want to write this formula down on a note card. Okay. That way you have it with you. Uh, you are allowed note cards on the, on the quizzes and tests. So you, you, you might want to get this down. It's kind of an important rendition of that formula. Okay. Let's figure it out. Distance is speed. times time seconds cancels well for the 40 times 4 um, this is 160 meters okay so that's a simple um, distance okay 160 meters all right Okay, in case you haven't guessed, we're going to now solve for time. So <clears throat> let's say there's a guy running. Okay, here he is. Okay, he's running along. Okay, and I draw pictures with everything so that way I can get the physical representation of what's actually happening. So let's say a guy's running, and uh, we know that the speed is uh, 2 meters a second. And the, uh, let's say the distance is uh, 12 meters. Okay, we want to find out how long it's going to take this person, like the time it's going to take this person to run um, the 12 meters, running at 2 meters a second. So let's go back to our original formula. Okay, speed is distance over time. Okay, and how you solve for this is up to you. Uh, but generally, I like to do it in two steps. I know it seems a little much, but it always works. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to find, uh, we're going to know that uh, we're, what you're looking for is T. Okay, we got to get it by itself, so we got to kind of isolate it. A um, couple things you can do. Okay, I'll show you what works pretty well. You can cross multiply these. Okay, you can say that distance is speed times time, which we already know. Um, and then you can get rid of the S because you get the T by itself. So get rid of the S on both sides. And we end up with a cleaned up formula of uh, time is distance over speed. Okay, so let's fi figure out how much time it takes this guy to run 12 meters. All right, so we've got a distance of 12 meters. Okay, and we've got a speed of 2 meters per second. So we can do that pretty easily and understand that this, uh, this person takes 6 seconds to run the 12 meters if the speed is 2 meters a second. Now you may be looking at the problems and saying, hey, yeah, this, this stuff's pretty, you know, it's not bad. I can do this in my head. And I'll tell you what, most people can do this in their heads and it's okay, but I don't, I want you to, to, work, to, to let the physics do it. So write down your, your knowns. Okay, I wrote down what I knew. I drew a picture and then I wrote down my unknowns. I came up with a formula and then I had an answer. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's t kind of talk about the uh, the process of physics um, right now. Okay, I know this video is a bit long, but we're going to uh, we, we hit a lot of topics here.
Okay, so let's look at uh, this. We're going to write this in a notebook. Steps to solve problems. Okay, steps to solve problems. Step one. Write knowns. Step two. Write, write unknowns because we don't know what we're solving for. Step three, draw a picture. Okay, always have a picture. Okay, I'm actually going to grade you on all these things. I'm going to give you credit for this, this, and this. Uh, step four, choose a formula. Step five, solve. Okay, solve and get an answer. Step six, you just want to check it. Okay, check it for, uh, does it make sense? So check for uh, reasonable, re reasonability. Like, if you come up with an answer uh, that doesn't seem reasonable, you may want to go back and, uh, to step five and, you know, go back and see if that's what you did. So I'll leave this up for a second. Uh, you want to get these down. You want to be able to know that, uh, that I'm going to give you some credit for these. So this will be like um, basically like a 20%. This will be like a 20%. This will be, again, another 20%. I think we're up to 80, right? Yeah. So 80 per, uh, 80%, and this will be 20%. So look, the answer is only 20% of the, the grade. If you do all these things, bing, 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 you will end up with uh, 80% even if you don't have the right answer. Okay, so that's a pretty good thing. So keep in mind we're going to do this. We're going to uh, grade you with the knowns, the unknowns, the picture, the formula, the, sol the solution. The checking for reasonability is your own thing. You don't get credit for that, unfortunately. All right.